I confess to certain favorites of the collection. I mean, they're, they're, they're so ironic and, and so over the top that even though this is such a tragic issue uh, that took the life of my own father, uh, smoking really has this amazing uh, hilarity to it because no one, as my father said, would, would one day believe that uh, 50 years later that sports and smoking would still be associated thanks to the tobacco industry. But um, I, I, I just... I'm stunned every time I see the Journal of the American Medical Association ashtray. I am equally stunned by the gift boxes for Kent that you would have personally uh, engraved in gold uh, embossing um, when you went to an American Medical Association meeting that was two packs of Kent cigarettes with the Kent uh, Micronite uh, filter story inside, a little booklet, and uh, the National Medical Association, the California Medical Association, all uh, gave out these um, these gifts. There's the little Willie the Cool Doctor Penguin that you could get at the Brown and Williamson booth at medical meetings. I suppose my holy grail would be any film or photographs of an actual American Medical Association conference that featured the um, tobacco industry uh, booths. We know that they were there. We have um, examples in the cigarette company's own ads, the the slide I've shown for years is of uh, uh, the T-Zone for Camel Cigarettes, and they touted in this ad in the New York State Journal of Medicine that they were at the AMA convention showing the benefits of the T-Zone and showing how very little of the bad stuff got down into the lungs. It was all stopped in the T-Zone and, um, and how it was important to make sure the T-Zone was not being irritated. Whatever it was, that was R.J. Reynolds' Camel Cigarettes. And so... Uh, I would love to see any photographs or or records of the actual um, exhibits of the tobacco companies at American Medical Association meetings. I understand and that the last um, time that cigarettes uh, were given away at medical meetings was in the mid eighties. I can't pinpoint the exact date, but around 1986 or seven, I was a guest speaker at the Kentucky Medical Association, and. Afterwards, a woman came up to me and, and said that I gave a wonderful talk that was very inspiring, and she appreciated it. And I noticed she was crying. So I said, I'm sorry, did, did, I, uh, did I say something? She says, well, yes. Um, uh, yesterday I learned that my sister has lung cancer. I said, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. And she said, but you don't know the half of it. I gave my sister lung cancer. I said, I, I, that doesn't, I don't understand. You work for the medical society, which is what she, she had a little tag that said that. I said, but how could you have given your sister lung? She said, you don't understand. I used to work for the R.J. Reynolds Company, and one of the places that I came to detail or to give away our product was here at the Kentucky Medical Association annual meeting, and I had my booth, and the doctors would line up literally right down the hall to get a free carton of camels, and I gave my extras to my sister. So it, it, you know, this dates to then. The last ad I saw in a medical journal for cigarettes would have been in something called Physician East. It was for Carlton cigarettes. Carlton is lowest in tar. And that would have been in 1983. I had the issue. I, it was a kind of a throwaway published in Massachusetts. I don't know what happened to the original, but I have images of the front cover and the, the Carlton ad in the magazine. But... Um, Overall, the uh, the irony of the JAMA ashtray there's also is one thing that really gets me. I think all the cigarette ads in JAMA that appeared right through 1954, uh, that would go along with the article that I wrote in the New York State Journal of Medicine, When More Doctors Smoke Camels, a history of cigarette advertising in the New York State Journal of Medicine, from around 1933 to around 1955. The ads ended in the Journal of the American Medical Association, um, after the Kent Micronite filter uh, controversy occurred when um, Morris Fishbein, the editor of JAMA, didn't really um, want to uh, question his advertiser, and Kent was an advertiser in JAMA. And it turns out that the early filter was made out of asbestos, and it turns out that um, there really was no health benefit to filters in general, but... Uh, the notion was it's time that we got rid of cigarettes with the health scare being what it is. So cigarettes, cigarette ads ended in the Journal of the American Medical Association by 1955. And um, really those items related to medicine and smoking 
are the cornerstone of the collection. One of my other favorite items is, of course, the Mayo Clinic ash, uh, Mayo Clinic cigarette case, and the um, uh, I, I just recently uh, obtained on eBay a little button uh, from uh, I believe Australia that dates to about 1912, 1915, and it shows a nurse uh, lighting up the patient's cigarette on a, a little button, and it's for National uh, Hospital Week. And uh, it, it is absolutely riveting. So we're hoping to get a better image of that and to include this among the best images of the collection. Uh, there really are uh, a variety of things that, in terms of the book. The, um, the Aaron's Collection catalog is, is a wonderful, um, rare book, uh, actually many volumes. And the lecture by um, uh, the uh, Dr. Benjamin Waterhouse on uh, the evil tendencies of smoking and the Venus spirits from 1804, the commencement address to the Harvard Medical School students, is really my favorite item in terms of any literature. Also, the volumes of the tobacco industry's uh, main trade journal uh, in the peak era of controversy when and around the Surgeon General's report was published in 1964. They make riveting reading. These volumes were acquired for about $400 through a tip by Ben Rappaport, and they, I don't know whether they exist anywhere else except perhaps at the Tobacco Merchants Association, which is not open to the public. But just these 15 or 20 volumes uh, just are a, a perfect window into what the industry really said and did as opposed to what they were said to have done in secret and there is no proof that they actually ever did what they said they were going to do or that some middle-level manager did, say, in secret. One other amazing item uh, is a Camel Cigarette Salesman's Book. This is a, a, a beaten-up uh, kind of a, a thick notebook that you thumb, uh, almost like a, a moving picture little booklet uh, where the images uh, form a whole as you thumb through it. But this has approximately 100 different ads for Camel cigarettes. I should say they are all the same ad, but they are in different languages. And it, it appears that this was used by salesmen to go into all of the ethnic newspapers in New York. And again, there are more than 100 listed here. And to give them a copy of the very same Camel ad in their language, and hence over about 100 uh, different uh, languages uh, the same ad for Camel cigarettes.